apparently there was a response video to my end of junior engineers. So let's see what this response is. I know I make a guest appearance. Hello, you wonderful people. I want to make this video again because a lot of people are still asking me, is AI going to take our jobs? Is there hope for new developers getting hired? By the way, just so you guys know, just remember the amount of shitty code that Copilot produces. Every line of code requires some level of maintenance at some point in the future. Never forget that. The faster code changes, the more people are needed to help maintain it. If anything, jobs, jobs are going up, okay? The jobs are going up. And I wanna play a video for you from Primogen. And I knew I was mentioned because he tagged me in a tweet, but this is all I know. Please tell me not to die. Hopefully it's positive. I'm only gonna play a short snippet because I want to, I want all of you who are looking to get into this. Pre-watch? No, I was I was tagged in the I was tagged. Shut up with your pre-watching. Career, regardless if you're going self-taught route, college degree, whatever path you take, don't give up. By the way, I absolutely hate hearing myself. So this next part is gonna be so cringe. I'm gonna sit here and think, how do I even speak like that? How am I this inarticulate that I would take all these words and jumble them into what appears to be a sentence, but not actually say anything. It is going to be hard, but it's possible. I'm and hard anybody right now. that's giving you that doom and gloom about AI. By the way, I'm already really liking this. I really do hope that more people make more videos about things not being bad. That this whole doom and gloom, like I am still so pissed off that the CEO of NVIDIA said we should not teach kids coding anymore. That is just so horrible because there's entire groups of people who just feel like they're completely lost because of assholes like this. Like, yeah, that guy has made all of his money. He actually had all that. Did he actually say that? Yes, he actually did say that. For those that don't know, uh, CEO NVIDIA uh, tells kids, CEO of NVIDIA argues that we should stop saying kids should learn to code. Of course, we should all become proved engineers using his technology and his GPUs. Naturally speaking, isn't that just so effed up? Like, think about how many people he just made feel more hopeless because they try prompting. It totally sucks. It totally doesn't make their actual job any better. They can't figure out how many R's are in strawberry. And then they're like, wow, I must suck at this. Tell them to shut the up and just do your thing. I'm just upset. I'm upset because this is selling people on so many stuff. It's writing this crazy. Gosh, I can't believe I sound like that. Why do you guys listen to what appears to be a bad version of Jordan Peterson? I get all the benefits of sounding like Kermit, plus the good looks of Kermit. It's just the worst. The article that's making people feel absolutely horrible about the future. This article is actual gatekeeping. This article actually prevents the next class of people from coming in because it steals from them the worst thing to steal out of all things for people that are new, which is hope. And you should never steal hope from somebody. And that just... I totally agree with what I'm saying. It just pisses me off. And that's what I think I'm feeling. And I just, I absolutely hate that. And I don't use the term chat battle. gatekeeping because gatekeeping chat is battle. largely a stupid term. But in this case, it's actual gatekeeping. And I'm actually pissed off about this. This is a terrible article. You have opportunity. You have hope. Get good at your craft. Find, discover anything you like about it and dive deep into it. And I guarantee you that if you push long enough, push hard enough, you will find not only a job you enjoy, but you'll be able to have actually some sort of satisfaction in what you're doing. So please don't buy these kind of articles. They are absolutely horrible. Sorry, I got super, dude, I'm like super pissed right now. Dude, I, I, I'm not gonna lie to you, dude. I'm like, I'm like I, I live it. Just to give you some context. Before we go on, if we go to Warren buffering, I do agree with everything I said. I genuinely do think that what I said was absolutely correct. It's very, very smart. It's absolutely brilliant. It truly is amazing. All right, let's keep on going. This, I think this is actually, so far I'm really liking the video. <laughs> and obviously I had a nice big part in this. <laughs> but I really do like, I mean, I really do think there's just so much to this that the last two years have really made such bad decisions for people. And I think there's coming a point, all these engineers that have entered into the field they all feel disenfranchised, and now they're like a huge amount of people are kind of like leaving the field, 
uh, the field are feeling like it's not possible. So they're all kind of dipping out. And I think we're going to enter this part or this point where the need for engineers is probably growing like this. And we're going to enter in this like little intersection where the people coming in and all that are greater than the need and we're going to, or less than the need. And we're going to actually find ourselves in a really big problem with engineering, which is also really great for the people that are sticking through it. Because when that gap does happen, it means that pay goes up. It means that uh, job opportunity goes up. It means that it becomes a buyer's market again, as opposed to the seller's market, right? Like that would be a great thing if we can get into that uh, position again, because in t- 2021, that's what, what was happening, right? In 2021, it was like way down here and we had another one of these sweet markets. Well, heck yeah, more money. I, I think that I genuinely think that will happen. It will take years. Of course, it's going to take years. There's no, nothing takes a couple days, Right, people are just going to make bad decisions. Companies are going to get into bad positions, and then they're going to try to claw themselves back out. That was from a reaction Primogen did to an article called "The End of Junior Engineers," and this is where someone of respectable credentials wrote an article yeah. talking about. By the way, I was actually really surprised about this really famous tech lead person writing such an article i was actually super surprised by this this the steve yegi yegi fella uh just because i've only ever heard such amazing and good things about this engineer and that the, he's really really sharp really well respected he was just trying to sell stuff like in the end he was just being he was just selling stuff through terrifying people yegi's a cynical guy then why was he like that like that wasn't even cynical the problem was is that was pure optimism sa- salesman bullshit it was hype cycle bullshit. And the worst part is he even said things like uh, lawyers need to stop hiring junior lawyers or junior junior analysts or whatever the, that is called because chat, uh, chat GPT is making it so much easier to do lawyerings. And the wild part is that that's not true at all. Not, not even paralegals. Like, jun, ju, like lawyers who are now becoming lawyers who are officially past the bar – the, whatever the junior lawyer position, not paralegal. A uh, paralegal just, I mean, paralegals might get hit more by Jeopardy, but my guess is still no. Uh, lawyer D's nuts, right? The problem is, is that in legal, virgin lawyers, uh, associates, uh, associate virgin Arch Linux virgin lawyers, he even said that those don't even need to be hired anymore because Chat GPT can do it, do it all. And it's like, that's such a crazy take. Any, I have asked. I'm probably up to like about 10 lawyers now that I've asked about ChatGPT, and they're like, oh, yeah, I was super excited about it. I used it once. It hallucinated 18 laws, and it made like a huge amount of work and possibly legal trouble, right? And this guy, this well-respected engineer, is literally pushing that kind of bullshit. I think there was a gold rush uh, in tech due to the pay, and we were inundated with these folks who don't love tech who became React engineers. Yeah, I mean that's also part of our problem with the pipeline. The pipeline itself tells you to become a successful engineer you must learn react which is just like like that's not what makes an engineer an engineer knowing a library does not make you an engineer an engineer is someone who can solve anything right if you can solve a problem that is presented to you in the constrained environment that is presented to you you are a software engineer if knowing how to arrange pixels on a screen via react you are not a software engineer okay Maybe you're very junior. Maybe you're intern level. You're just getting started. Everyone, hey, everyone has to start somewhere. But if you think that that's what engineering is, you're wrong. That's not engineering. My favorite times engineering is when I've been presented things that are so vastly outside of my abilities that it is amazing and I have to understand and learn. Right, like when I was given a task to go build a multi-threaded cache data caching for the iOS app at Netflix, it's like. Dude, I don't know. I don't know Objective C. I know shit about Objective C. I've n- I've been in JavaScript or Java for the last like four years, and now I have to go and build some multi-threaded nonsense in Objective C using Xcode. Yeah, I did. It was great. It was a great experience. About how basically junior engineers is dead because of AI and all the things that it's capable of. And he went through the article saying how everything that a junior developer can do could be automatically done by AI. And this is obviously not true. There's many reasons why I don't agree with that article. And this is why I keep always telling you, if you wanna get hired, 
there is opportunity for you. Is it going to be easy? Nothing is ever easy in life. And it doesn't matter what work you do. Some people tell me, hey, I want to, you know, not go into coding. I'm going to go into plumbing. You know what? They're both very good careers. You just have to decide what you like and do. And I'll show you another video today, which may basically burst your bubble. Anything worth doing is difficult. And I'll share it till the end of this video. I do. I do like that. The thing is, is that it's not anything worth doing is going to be difficult. If what you're doing isn't difficult, if it doesn't have a big skill gap, you truly are going to be bored. Like it's going to start feeling more and more just monotonous. And I know we live in the, in the day and age of, of low attention spans, high boredom, e very easy to kind of like just feel distracted all the time. And I totally get that. But at the end of the day, we live in a life also that we get to choose our hard. And for me, that's amazing. You don't want to work out, you don't have to work out, but you pay the consequence for not working out. Your body's gonna fall apart faster. It's not gonna feel as good. There's gonna be problems with your heart sooner than later. Like those are all hard things, but you got to choose which hard you wanted. And so is, is it hard to learn how to program low level? Absolutely, but you get to choose that. Do you want that hard or a different hard? Do you want the hard of just simply barely getting by, barely kind of doing just, just doing the absolute minimum, taking years to try to figure out how to get a job? Then when you finally get employed, they're just not treating you well. Like, right? Do you take the really small, easy, don't even try because you want to maximize life opportunity? Well, yeah, life opportunity is great, but sometimes you got to like actually switch up how you're doing things. When I was first learning, I committed to myself. I was doing tons of work because I wanted to get good at what I was doing. And I didn't want to keep getting rejected from interviews. And I did get rejected from interviews. I got rejected from actually several interviews. But I kept trying to go as hard as I can just so I can get better and better and better. And lo and behold, it actually made things easier. I chose my hard and my hard was up front. Several will get to remember that I lived in Bozeman, Montana. There was only like seven companies. So I want to show you at Catalina Perea. 5212 comment and i'm sorry if i mispronounce the name i'm a junior developer still looking for a job so not yet i haven't looked at it from your perspective i just find it useful that it comes to re repetitive stuff what i would like copy and paste so to just discuss in code and then we get another comment last year i was listening to one of the john's lives with you and you guys were speaking about a student who didn't really look sideways and just kept working on herself yeah this was katya she basically kept working on learning didn't really spend time doing anything else besides learning to code and she got hired and i like how catalina priya like i kind of took that to heart so i'm just all in it doing my best i know i won't regret it when i even if i never get hired and that's the attitude you just keep at it i know i did my best and failed is better than never trying and very well said and he kept persevering by the way base catalina catalino like that's, that's pretty based. I, I really like this idea of not looking sideways. I think looking sideways is probably your biggest cause of imposter syndrome. There's always going to be somebody at your experience, at, at your time in, at your experience, at, at like your tenure, at your position, at your same school, at any kind of like anything that lines you up as the, at the same point. And they seem so much better, right? They seem so much better than you. And you're going to feel this constant pull of imposter syndrome. Like, why am I not as good? Why am I not as good as this person? We've both been at this job for six months, yet they're completely destroying it. And I, I feel confused, right? And that's because you're, you're probably, you're just, you're just measuring wrong. Maybe they are better and they could be better. That's the thing is that talent does exist. Some people are just going to learn faster than you. Some people are going to look at you and have the same imposter syndrome that you have looking at somebody else. Have you ever thought about that? That you at your level, are probably causing other people to have imposter syndrome. And that's because people can't stop trying to like measure themselves against somebody else. You should really, 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 really avoid that because that's never going to work. Like programming is just such a difficult thing to measure as it is. What you think someone is good at, they could actually be really terrible. You just don't even know what good is, right? It's, 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 it's very difficult. Just compare yourself to your past self. If three months ago, what you did and what you produced is better or the same level, then I don't think you are actually 
getting anything out, right? If your ability to communicate, to be able to send, you know, to be able to say messages in Slack that actually, uh, that actually get responses that you're trying, right? There's like all these different facets to engineering. If those aren't getting better, if they're staying the same, then you are actually getting worse. If they're getting worse, then like how bad are you actually getting? Which is a hard concept. You know, I was lucky enough to kind of get that out of my system when I was really young. I was uh, multiple attempts at college, completely failed out. I couldn't even do pre-calculus. And when I finally went back to school, I went back for summer school. And when I went back to summer school, I did two hours of class in the morning, followed by two hours of a math learning center and then followed by about six hours of me practicing on my own. And I did that four or five days a week and just kept doing it over and over and over again. And I thought, I'm going to be the worst student here. Like, I can barely pass pre-calculus. And here I am in calculus, right? Bigger brother calculus. I am by far the worst student, absolutely. And I just kept going and I kept going. And I started to feel a little bit better. And I started going, okay, I'm actually, I feel like I can actually do this. I feel like I'm going to raise the test, right? I'm actually feeling really good. But it's not because I am somehow some magical genius that's super, super smart. I was just spending 10 hours a day doing something. And by the end, by the, the end of the five weeks of summer school, I went in and I took the test. And this is one of those like my personal proud moments of, achieve, uh, of achievement, which is that when I went in, I took the test. I finished the final in 30 minutes. And when I handed in the paper, my teacher was like, hey, are you sure you want to be done already? And I'm like, yeah, I did it all. One of my friends in the class said that the next person finished at about an hour and 45 into the test. And what I realized is the people that were in the class were smarter than me, for sure. Like they were more talented to begin with. They had more understanding. They had a much better concrete foundation for mathematics than me. I was off using methamphetamines and LSD and all this shit. Right, like I wasn't, I wasn't like in a good spot. But because talent didn't work hard, but I chose to work hard, I absolutely dominated. Right, and it turns out that all that talent led them to not try as much. Whereas I didn't have all that delicious talent. Right, I had to just simply work hard for it. And maybe I'm just not the smartest person. Right, and that's okay. I'm okay not being the smartest person. I don't need to be the smartest person. But I know I can work hard, and I and that is my talent. And I said, yes, you're still working in the industry. And I mean, getting your first job is the hardest thing. Two weeks it ago, I get I got, this dude, comment so from Catalina Priya, 5212. I'm sorry if I mispronounced the name, Jesus Christ. But Coding After 30 finally got hired. This is amazing. Huge congrats. Would love to hear about your journey. Look at the response here. I want to highlight this because this is the most important part. Thank you. Nothing much, as I said before, I took your advice to heart and just kept working on my goal. Not bothering what is happening in the outside world, I got hired as a junior Node.js developer. Got to pour one out for, for working on Node. Sorry, but hey, at least you're working. Let's go. Let's go. Just, 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 just pour it all out. I can't, I can't pour out the water. I mean, hey, it's a junior job. Hey, it's a junior job. It's okay. We all have... You know, junior jobs are kind of, you know, they are where they are. You got to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere, okay? Absolutely. Got to start somewhere. I think it was the right choice for me to also learn back end and do some full stack projects, even though I am junior. And that's well said. And the one thing that I want to point out here, took your advice to heart. It's not my advice when I say, just do the work and the rest will happen for you. If you spend your time thinking about other things that pull you apart from the actual studying, from actually building things, from going and trying to go to interviews, reaching out to people, yes, you're not gonna get hired, but it's not my advice, it's just the way life works. So no matter what job you wanna do, you wanna be a developer, you wanna be a doctor, you wanna be a plumber, it just takes hard work and effort to get there. So comments like this, make me so excited and so happy and this is why i keep doing this channel because this is the reality people still are getting hired even in 2024 with all these folks talking about doom and gloom with ai which don't believe the hype it's not happening and i think there's kind of like an interesting perspective maybe he's not highlighting it and how he's kind of talking but this is kind of how i'm taking it which this is actually a gk chesterton kind of talk where G.K. Chesterton talks about like the two kinds of people. There's the healthy person, which talks about really large end goals. 
And then there's unhealthy person, which talks about really shallow, short goals. And he gives the example of someone who's lived a healthy lifestyle. When they first begin to get sick, start talking of the process of getting better. Really small things, right? They're no longer healthy. They're now talking about really small steps in their life. They're no longer talking about the journey to the end of the world. They're instead talking about, oh, I need to make sure I do all these things. I need to make sure I'm doing, you know, like they're very, very prescriptive and very, very precise versus the person that has just like wild goals, kind of like a, like a kid, like a kid in their infancy thinks that they can reach the moon, right? Like that's a goal that's incredible, like, right? That's an incredible goal. Now, whether it's realistic or not, it doesn't matter. Their goals are huge. Their ideas are huge. And as you get more and more, like as, you're, as things get more and more real and as death gets nearer and nearer, your goals become smaller and smaller. And so there's this idea that uh, I see it a lot that you, you see it a lot, even in this chat, you see people, they walk in and they say, what do I need to do to get hired? That's not a big goal, right? That's a little goal. You're just like, give me the exact steps, the exact prescription such that I can do this. What I would consider a big goal is how do I, like, what do I do to become a great engineer? How do I pursue this, this lifelong activity? To me, this is actually like a big goal. This is a, this is not a, a small one-step context. And so when I hear this, it, it's really hard because like, I don't know your area. Nobody knows your area, right? I don't know where you're at, what you're doing. I, nobody knows like what your talent level is. Nobody knows all these different things that can go into what does it take to get a job? I don't know, right? Like it depends on your area. For me, how would, how would I approach getting a job? Well, I would start sending out a whole bunch of resumes and doing, you know, I have my own kind of way I go, go through things. I sort jobs based on things that I know I'm really good at or things I can talk about. But that's a very small, very precise, very prescriptive step. Whereas like when I think about how do I get better at what I'm doing, I think about how do I build stuff that's outside of my wheelhouse, something that makes it so that I have to be really, really challenged. And this is why I choose things like building things in Zig, because I know that I'm not great at manual memory management. I've just never been that great at it. Yeah, I've done C professionally for a couple of years, but I've never really attempted to uh, build things like fully from scratch myself. And so just really thinking and doing that, really thinking about memory layout, why a virtual table, why not all that, like that's like me trying to challenge myself not for the end goal of something small, but for the end goal of something big, something that takes a long time to get to. And so if I could give you advice, which is, it's not that I don't want you to get hired. Obviously, getting hired is very, very important. People really need the money. I mean, I trust me, I was there. I had the man below me threatening to kill me. I was freshly married. We had a horrible starting living in what appears to be a house full of either college students or meth addicts. It was not a very fun time. Most certainly will not claim that money does not make life demonstrably better. Um, right. I, I get that. Okay. But it's very hard when you're, when you're, when your idea is to focus on that goal, because when you get that goal, what happens to your vision? Well, you've did it. You've accomplished it. Right. How many people do I know that when they accomplish the getting hired, their learning stops, what made them get hired in the first place stops because they only did what they had to do to get done. They're not like their ability to get to senior engineer or to get to some higher thing or tech lead or whatever you want to be. It stops because they already achieved the goal of what they wanted. And not, not everybody wants to be a great engineer. I don't blame you if you don't want to be one, right? You don't, you don't have to be one, but it's just something to think about. It's just something I think about quite frequently, which is what is the end or what is the purpose? I don't want to just simply stop at a point. I want to get further. Nothing wrong with getting a, uh, getting a job and getting the bag and nothing more. Of, of, course, of course, there's nothing wrong with that. But I'd also argue that I'm not sure how fulfilling it, it is. Right? Like, I don't know how fulfilling that kind of life is. When, it, when, it, when, when there's absolutely no connection to what you're doing, it's also, uh, it's also kind of important to keep the job. It, it is. I don't know how fulfilling the life is to live in a life in which you've achieved your goal and now you just coast. Yeah, I mean, sure, there's hobbies and there's things you can do, and life's not all that fair. I get that. Uh, it's totally true. It's, it's it, A lot of things can be crappy, and maybe you have a good family and you want to lean into that. I get that. You know what? I should have started my stream at 5.30 in the morning this morning. You know what I did instead? I made coffee, sat down on the couch, and hugged my two boys, and we just hung out for like an hour. Why? Because it, it wasn't as important for me to stream. Like, I get it. Like, you got you got to also make time for things outside of work. Again, the flex, yeah, if we're flexing hard, I'm flexing hard. You know, it's just like, 
there's going to come a bo- there's going to come a point where when I wake up early, there's going to be no kid on the couch. There's not going to be Stop. You get the idea. And so all of this to be said about big visions, big goals, you just have to have a good big vision and a good big goal. You know what I mean? Like it can't just simply be the great be a great engineer. You should also want to be a great husband, a great father, a great wife, a great whatever, right? Like you have to put all these things together and think about the big the big purpose of life. Okay, shut up. Man, sorry, if I if I meant, okay, so the reason why it's really easy for me to, like, lose it a little bit is because when I was young, you know, my dad died when I was seven. And so if I watch a movie where there's just, like, a dad, like, you know, like, uh, what's it called? When, 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 when Leto Atreides tells his son, Paul Atreides, like, the reason why I love you is because you are my son. Oh, man. I'm, like, just, like, it's so stupid because I cry at that. Because it's just, like, that's, Right? I can only say that. I can never experience that. But do you do you understand what I say? I can only be Leto. Leto. I can never have a Leto. Ugh. All right. And with that being said, I'm going to show you one more video from a guy who talks from making it big as a plumber. And the point is, it's not the job Ooh. that you're looking for. By the way, this is actually really, I've never actually, I've never actually seen a, a video about a plumber. So this is actually going to be really interesting because I'm curious how much of what we say as engineers line up with what people say in other professions. It's the process. If you want to do plumbing, you want to be a doctor, you want to be developer, you have to put in the work. And so because I never took shortcuts and I was committed to the job and I didn't just fucking quit and I realized it was a long game. I realized that like, by the way, this guy is this guy is based out of his mind. Hitting us with the whiteboard, camera slightly off, a little bit of reverb, smoking that Turkish Royale in his hand. Dude, what a just a just a just a based ass man by by the way, right here. Smoking literally inside with wood panel wall. I actually want to hear this in its entirety, so here I'm gonna, I'm gonna re- rewind it and we're gonna listen to it in its entirety. I have to put in the work. And so because I never took shortcuts and I was committed to the job and I didn't just fucking quit and I realized it was a long game. I realized that like, I'm not gonna be here in two years. I'm not gonna be here in three years. I knew from day one, it was 10 years minimum before I got to where I am now. And it took longer than that. And I'm smart as fuck, you know what I mean? So like, it, it's not a quick thing. The integrity and reputation, the way you do some things is the way you do all things, okay? Oh my gosh, I love that so much. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. So many pe- dude, I cannot tell you how many chat chat Reddit tier atheists will tell you that that's not true, but it it is it is so true. If you are willing to take shortcuts in little things, you will take shortcuts in big things. It sucks. Principles are they're shitty. They are shitty. Because when you have really strong principles, it means you have to do things that are difficult even when it doesn't matter when no one's looking. Have principles, have character. I love the honesty in his presentation. He's like, listen, I committed to the work and it took me 10 years until I made it big. The good news, this journey of learning to code is not going to take you 10 years. I took the slow path. It took me four years. So I started learning to code around 35 and a half and I got my first job around 39 years old. And I know that people could do it quickly because I've seen it myself firsthand. When I say quickly, not in three to six months, but two years, two and a half years, three years. By the way, did you just hear that? Started at 35. How many people in chat, how many times just yesterday was I asked? Is 33 years old too late to learn how to code? Is 31 years old too late to learn how to code? Is 29, some people asking if 29, is 38 too too old to uh, start coding? This guy started at 35 and a half and didn't get his first job until he's 39. That's three and a half years of work. Years of consistent studying, you got this. And if some people say it's not worth it, maybe you just don't want it bad enough. But if you take a look at plumbers, if you take a look at doctors, if you look at any other career, any path that leads to substantial income takes hard work. 
there are no shortcuts so if you found this video motivational you know hit the thumbs up button and you if you think i'm completely out of my mind to tell you that hard work and perseverance is what gets you there then the guy gets disliked the video with that being said thanks so much for watching i'm gonna get back to making some more coding videos of course i'm gonna continue making this content where i share my true and honest opinion of what it takes to get a job and hopefully i'll do some live streaming coding as well i need to get back to it but with that being said i'll see you Legend. in the next video thank you for your time i love you you're all the best and may you have all the best in your life and i'll see you later Dude, absolute legend. Dude, even his channel name, Coding After 30. I am actually extremely happy. I uh, I watched that video because, man, I, I didn't know uh, how good good this all uh, this all was. This was absolutely great. Very happy with it. Thank you, Coding After 30. Great video. I will not cry again. Okay? There's not, we're not going to do it. Not going to do it. But great video. Great message. And there's just, I, I guarantee you, there's so many people in this chat right now that actually need, that even even no matter how many times I say it, still need to hear that. And the best part is, is that when I release that video, there will still be people needing to hear it. And even after they hear it, they'll need to hear it again in like two months. Because that's just what happens. It's just like, it's so funny how easy it is to forget these principles. It's so easy to forget the simplest things in life. The name is the primogen.